Anne Boleyn is one of the most talked about queen consorts in English history, and with so many film and television adaptations of Henry VIII, she has developed a mixed view amongst fan bases of those films and television shows. To some, she's an independent reformist, to others, she's a glorified whore. Now, I'm not a historian, but I do read a lot on the subject of English royalty, and I found myself quite in the middle with Anne Boleyn. Now, fans of Anne Boleyn have come around on videos and boards about the other five wives, namely Catherine of Aragon and Jane Seymour, asking why there's so much hate for her, um, Anne Boleyn. Now, I don't think the hate comes from Anne herself, but rather from how fans of those television shows and films have treated her in comparison to the other wives. And that is the topic of this video, the problem with Anne Boleyn. And kind of how the fans view her and how the, that view has affected Anne Boleyn as a person or even a character because now she's so larger in life, in life she is a, basically a character in this history story. Now from my observation there are three problems with Anne Boleyn. One, she's always the main focus of any Henry VIII adaptation overriding Catherine of Aragon who was his longest marriage, his first marriage, and to a degree his more successful marriage. Two, fans refuse to acknowledge her in the downfall of Catherine and part of Men Harry's descent into madness and the creation of Bloody Mary. And three, the double standards between Jane Seymour and Anne Boleyn. And this is the points that I had to back it up. Okay, one, for dealing with the first part. Catherine was queen for 20 years, ruled as a regent, and played a key role in winning a battle in Floden. Um, the controversial book, The Education of Christian Women, by Juan Luis Vives, I don't really know how to pronounce that really well, I'm kind of tired, but whatever, which claimed that women had the right to an education was dedicated to her and commissioned by her. Yet, some Anne fans call her weak, a doormat, and not a feminist queen. She is more or less the only queen of, and wasn't, was the only queen that Henry wanted out of love, and not just lust, in the case of, you know, Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard, or that the queen that he wanted for just a comfortable lifestyle, which was more Jane, Anne of Cleves, and Catherine Parr. And even after he stopped sleeping with Catherine, he loved and respected her. And most of their marriage was happy until their, the death of their last son, Henry the Ninth. he would have been. But there are no movie adaptations with her as the lead. And in the adaptation, The Private Lives of Henry VIII, she was left out completely, saying that her part in their relationship was irrelevant, you know. And it's not fair seeing as how she was queen the longest and had done a lot of accomplishments and did a lot of things to England. Her story is just as interesting as is just as interesting as Anne Boleyn, but she gets none of the attention. Um and for the case of just, you know, what is Anne's role in Catherine's downfall? While Henry may be the true villain in the situation, the fact remains that Anne wanted to be queen. Once the king's attention was brought to her doorstep, she didn't want to be a mistress and said she wanted to become queen. Fine, I understand that, but if this is true, then it's undeniable that she played a part in Catherine's undoing and part of Mary's eventual hatred towards Protestants. However, Anne fans will say that Henry wanted to divorce Catherine before Anne came along. While this is true, it is also true that Henry was going to make Anne a mistress until she refused and said she would only be with him sexually if they were married, thus propelling the king's great matter and Catherine's eventual removal as queen. In terms of Mary, while the details are not 100% certain, it is known that she was very cruel to the young disowned princess. And this is why fans of, you know, Catherine and people who sympathize with Mary Tudor say that Anne should be held accountable for those actions. We understand. It would have, we understand it's not totally her fault, but that is the case. All right. And this is the thing, the last point is what really makes me upset. Anne fans treat Jane Seymour like crap and place all the blame for Anne's death on Jane's hands. Yet when the topic of Catherine's death is blamed on Anne, those same fans are quick to say it was Henry's fault. Well, if it was Henry's fault there, how is it suddenly Jane's fault here? The other thing that many of them say was that Jane was a sneaky bitch who knew what she was doing. My response to that is, like Anne wasn't when she was taking Catherine's throne, in fact there was evidence historical evidence of Anne Boleyn insulting Catherine while she was still queen and living in the palace and wishing for her death. But that's okay because it's Anne Boleyn. Whatever she's doing is okay because according to people, she's a feminist. You know, that's bullshit, in my opinion, if you're going to just use excuse, she's not, she's not a feminist. Just because, some, just because a woman has an attitude does not automatically make her a feminist. It's another topic, though. Now on to Jane. The king offered her to become his mistress, but she denied him. Hmm. Sounds like someone else we know, don't you think? And this triggered for Henry to do the same thing he felt 
when Anne denied him the need to get another queen. Henry was unhappy with Anne, not only because she could not give him a son, but because of her attitude. To quote, um, basically, David Starkey, a renowned Tudor historian and a fan of Anne Boleyn, this is what happened. This is from his book, The Six Wives of Henry VIII, which I highly recommend to any Tudor fan. And this is his um, interpretation of the situation. How a woman like Jane Seymour became Queen of England is a mystery. In Tudor terms, she came from nowhere and was nothing. What was there here? A woman of no family, no beauty, no talent, and perhaps not much reputation to attract a, a man who had already been married to two such extraordinary women as Catherine and Anne. Maybe Jane's very ordinariness was, ordinariness was the point. Anne had been exciting as a mistress, but she was too demanding, too meticul, too meticul and too tempestuous to, be, to make a good wife. Like the gospel for which she patronized, she seemed to have come not to spread peace but the sword, and to make a man's foes them of his own household. Henry was wary of scenes and squabbles, wary of two reputes with his nearest and dearest and closest friends. He wanted his life and his friends back. He wanted domestic peace and the quiet life. He also more disturbingly wanted submission. For increasing age and the supremacy's relentlessness elevation of the monarchy had made him ever more impatient of contradiction and disagreement. Only obedience, prompt, absolute, and unconditional would do, and he could have none of this with Anne. Jane, on the other hand, was everything that Anne was not. She was calm, quiet, soft-spoken, and profoundly submissive, at least to Henry. In short, after Anne's flagrant defiance of convection, convention, Jane was the 16th century's ideal woman, or at least the 16th century's male ideal woman. And that is the case. And so, while Jane is part of it, Anne played her own role in her own undoing. But that's not recognized. Henry had lost a lot when he separated, him, separated himself for Catherine to marry Anne. He lost the support of Rome. An ally in Spain sent his father figure, Cardinal Wolsey, and one of his best friends, Thomas More, to be killed. Also, his close friend, Charles Brand, in the Duke of Suffolk, and his wife, Mary Tudor, who was, um... Henry's favorite sister, both hated Anne. The latter was even harder because he'd been very close to his sister. He'd lost all hope of having a son, and he still didn't have what he wanted, and he was being annoyed by his wife. Even if Jane hadn't come along, he was getting tired of Anne and wanted to be rid of her. Now, in comparison, Henry's only real complaint about Catherine was the fact that she could not bear him a son, meaning Anne had much more to do with had much more to do with Catherine's downfall than Jane had to do with Anne's, and Anne already dug herself into a huge hole. In terms of Queen, many people say that Jane was a doormat and did very little to the country in comparison to Anne. But, however, it's very much possible that Anne wanted to do more. Not Anne, I mean Jane wanted to do more, but lacked the power to do so. After Anne, Henry became much more power hungry than he was before and wasn't going to crown Jane Queen or give her any power until she gave him a son. I mean, in 1536 is when she asked for pardons for the participant the participants at the Pilgrimage of Grace, which was that Catholic rebellion that they wanted their land back. Henry re rejected this, reminding her of the faith of Anne when she tried to meddle in her affairs. So because of Anne's influence, Jane had no power until she gave birth to Edward, and then she died before she could do anything. Do Anne fans acknowledge this? No, which leads to people talking down to Anne and treating her like the bad guy in order to show what Anne did. <sighs> Everything good Jane tried to do is considered irrelevant, like her trying to help Mary. And fans go, she didn't help Elizabeth. Well, I don't know, maybe because Henry was still angry about Anne, and trying to help Elizabeth without having any power would have been stupid? I have very little doubt that after Edward's birth, she would have tried to help Elizabeth, seeing as how with her male heir, there'd be no need to keep the girls bastardized. They're no longer a threat. In fact, I believe that if Jane had lived, things would have been very different, especially for Mary Tudor. She may have actually gotten married at an early age and had a much better life. May not even have had Bloody Mary, because with Jane alive and helping push Catholicism, we would have had a Catholic England still. In conclusion, I have to say this. I admire and respect all of Henry VIII's wives. Even though sometimes it seems like I pick on Anne, it's not because I don't like her. It's because I dislike how she has become the only important wife and the only wife worth being a lead character in film, in television, and sometimes even novel adaptations. She's another example of how people love mean girls and say that they're feminists for just being, you know, mean and bitchy. 
and being that to them that's revolutionary where it's it's just being a bitch as we see it all over television on Gossip Girl Blair Waldorf is everyone's favorite despite the fact she has no problem ruining people's lives to get what she wants she's a bully yet the moment she has sympathetic things going on in her life people ignore her faults yet when nicer characters like Vanessa Abrams stand up for themselves they get called all kinds of names. Yet we wonder why so many people try to act like Anne Boleyn and Blair Waldorf and, Ver and Veronica Lodge and all these other rude, terrible Regina George characters. We hate them in real life, but we idolize them in the media. We have made it so that it's irrelevant to be good.